of our own souls. Save us, Lord Jesus. Protect us from the temptations and evils that surround and attack us. Deliver us, Lord Jesus. Let us follow you and obey your commands. Direct and guide us, Lord Jesus. Brighten our lives and lift our spirits. Bring us at last to your glorious presence, Lord Jesus. Lord, we confess our need of you. We need your grace. We need your patience. We need your guidance. We cannot see beyond the moment or serve you as we ought to do. As we begin this solemn journey toward the cross, we rely upon your mercy and your love for our salvation. Amen. Please stand. We're going to sing this next song uh, with collective pronouns, us and we, because, because we are singing and praying these things not only our, for ourselves, but for the whole world, which needs it tonight. Wednesday is an embodiment of all that remains to be liberated and of our longing to be liberated. We uh, are marked with the ancient sign of ashes, uh, the ending, the burning down of things, the death of things, to remind us of our own mortality, of our sinfulness, and of the brokenness of the world. Lent is not a time to uh, 
be a spiritual athlete who's going to do it perfectly and impress God. Um, it is a time for introspection, but only as that leads us into looking more closely at the grace and love and mercy and justice of God that is so much greater than our own sin. The scripture in many places reminds us of how incredibly brief our life is and how that actually makes it important. We're going to hear now from Psalm 90, one of those reminders. Lord, through all the generations, you have been our home. Before the mountains were brought forth, or you had formed the earth and the world, from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. You turn us back to dust and say, Return, ye mortals. For a thousand years in your sight are like yesterday when it is past, or like a watch in the night. Teach us, Lord, to count our days that we may gain a wise heart. Satisfy us in the morning with your steadfast love, so that we may rejoice until the end of our lives. Amen. Amen. Together, let us ask for God's help. Lord, our God, you are full of compassion. As we enter this season of Lent, send your Spirit so that we may grow more and more aware of our need for a Savior. May we turn away from our sinful habits regularly and genuinely. May we resist temptations great and small. And whether we stand or fall, may remember with confidence that our Lord Jesus has conquered sin and death. Amen. Now let us quiet our hearts before our Creator and Redeemer. Three thousand years ago, King David wrote this psalm, which has, over the years, given voice to people's repentance. Let us now pray this psalm 51 responsibly. Have mercy on me, O God, because of your unfailing love, because of your great compassion, blot out the stain of my sins. Wash me clean from my guilt, and purify me from my sin. For I recognize my rebellion, it haunts me day and night. Against you and you alone have I sinned. I have done what is evil in your sight. You will be proved right in what you say, and your judgment against me is just. For I was born a sinner, yes, from the moment my mother conceived me, but you desire honesty even from the womb, teaching me wisdom even there. Purify me from my sins, and I will be clean. Wash me, and I will be whiter than snow. Oh, give me back my joy again. You have broken me. Now let me rejoice. Hide your face from my sins. Remove the stain of my guilt. Create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not banish me from your presence, and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation, and make me willing to obey you. Then I will teach your ways to rebels, and they will return to you. Forgive me for shedding blood, O God, who saves, that I will joyfully sing of your forgiveness. 
Unseal my lips, O Lord, that my mouth may praise you. You did not desire a sacrifice, or I would offer one. You do not want a burnt offering. My sacrifice, O God, is a broken spirit. You will not reject a broken and repentant heart. Wednesday. All those days you felt like dust, like dirt, as if all you had to do was turn your face toward the wind and be scattered to the four corners or swept away by the smallest breath as insubstantial. <clears throat> Did you not know what the Holy One can do with dust? This is the day we freely say we are scorched. This is the hour we are marked by what has made it through the burning. This is the moment we ask for the blessing that lives within these ancient ashes, that makes it home, its home inside the soil of the sacred earth. So let us be marked not for sorrow, and let us be marked not for shame. Let us be marked not for false humility or for thinking we are less than we are, but for claiming what God can do with the dust, with the dirt, with the stuff of which the world is made and the stars that blaze in our bones and the galaxies that spiral inside the smudge we bear. Gracious God, you created us out of the dust of the earth and breathed into us the breath of life. By your hand we live, and into your hands we return when all our days are done. May these ashes, these reminders of our mortality, Lead us not to fear, but to faith. In our weakness, teach us to look to you for strength. In our failures, to turn to you and find forgiveness. And in our dying, to await the gift of everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. to come and receive the sign of ashes.
There is a tradition that the ashes are made from burned palms. Palm Sunday was what seemed like the highlight, the high point of Jesus' ministry when everything was going right and everyone's best intentions seemed to be on display. And then a year later, those same palms are burned to make the ashes for Ash Wednesday. We know that all the resolutions and intentions that we have for the year don't always turn out. All the expectations of how we thought life would be don't always turn out. I invite you now to stand as we begin the litany of penitence, to spend some time praying and confessing our sins in specificity. We begin in unison. Most holy and merciful Father, we confess to you and to one another and to the whole communion of saints in heaven and on earth that we have sinned by our own fault in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart and mind and strength. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We have not forgiven others as we have been forgiven. Have mercy on us, Lord. We have been deaf to your call to serve as Christ served us. We have not been true to the mind of Christ. We have grieved your Holy Spirit. Have mercy on us, Lord. We confess to you, Lord, all our past unfaithfulness, the pride, hypocrisy, and impatience of our lives. We confess to you, Lord our self-centered appetites and ways, and our exploitation of other people. We confess to you, Lord. Our envy when we do not, our anger when we do not get our way, and our envy of those more fortunate than ourselves. We confess to you, Lord. Our excessive love of worldly goods and comforts, and our dishonesty in daily life and work. We confess to you, Lord. Our negligence in prayer and worship, and our failure to share the faith that is in us. We confess to you, Lord. Accept our repentance, Lord, for the wrongs we have done, for our blindness to human need and suffering, and our indifference to injustice and cruelty. Accept our repentance, Lord. For all false judgments, for uncharitable thoughts toward our neighbors, and for our prejudice and contempt toward those who differ from us. Accept our repentance, Lord. For our waste and pollution of your creation and our lack of concern for those who come after us. Accept our repentance, Lord. Restore us, good Lord, and let your anger depart from us. Favorably hear us, for your mercy is great. Accomplish in us the work of your salvation. That we may show forth your glory in the world. By the cross and the passion of your Son, our Lord. Bring us all your saints to the joy of his resurrection. And tonight we pray also for Ukraine and for all the places in our world where people live in fear of violence. Bring peace, justice, and safety to them quickly, we ask. Drive back the darkness of terror, greed, and violence. Keep us from giving in to hatred and fear, and awaken us to the dawning of your new creation. Establish among us, in our households, in our families, in our communities, and in the nations of the world, a future where peace reigns, justice is done with mercy, and all are reconciled. We ask these things in the name and for the sake of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lent is not a season to deny hope, but a time to reflect on why we need hope and where it comes from. When we are confronted with the fact that we will die, and with the terrible brokenness of the world, and with the reality of our sin, we need to be reminded of God's good news. Hear that word from Romans 8. For those who are led by the Spirit of God are the children of God. The Spirit you receive does not make you slaves, so that you live in fear again. Rather, the Spirit you receive brought about your adoption to sonship. And by him we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are God's children. Now, if we are children, then we are heirs, heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ. If indeed we share 
in his sufferings in order that we may also share in his glory. I consider that our present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us. For the creation waits in eager expectation for the children of God to be revealed. The creation was subjected to frustration not by its own choice, but by the will of the one who subjected it, in hope that the creation itself will be liberated from its bondage to decay and brought into the freedom and glory of the children of God. We know that the whole creation has been groaning as in the pains of childbirth right up to the present time. Not only so, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, groan inwardly as we wait eagerly for our adoption to sonship, the redemption of our bodies. For in this hope we were saved. But hope that is seen is no hope at all. Who hopes for what they already have? But if we hope for what we do not yet have, we wait for it patiently. Please be seated. In the face of our death and our sin and all of the death and wrong in the world, we are led inexorably to the cross and what God did at a terrible price to begin the work of liberation, to forgive us, to free us from the power of sin and hatred. And then three days later, to begin reversing death itself. May this meal that we have tonight be a morsel along the way that gives us the strength that we need to take another step in our journey through this life and into the life to come. On the night that he knew he was going to be betrayed, and he knew his disciples could not keep the bold promises that they had made, Jesus took bread and gave thanks for it. And when he had given thanks, he broke it. And he said, take this and eat it. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this and remember me. And after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks for it. And he said, drink of this, all of you, because this is my blood poured out for you and for many for the redemption, the rescue from sin. Please pray with me. Lord, we thank you that your grace is greater than all our sin. We ask that we will not despair when we know that we are dust, that we are frail physically and spiritually, but that we will always keep our eyes on Christ in us, the hope of glory. Amen. Please come to the meal.
please stand and let's sing this song as a prayer for us tonight and throughout this Lent season. repentant hearts. May Christ, who bore our sins in his body on the tree, heal us by his wounds. May the Holy Spirit, who leads us into all truth, speak to us words of pardon and assurance. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thank you. Thanks Thanks to God. God.